Um, so look, who did you chat to about the Australian market to get the up-to-date insights? Yeah, so look, we, we know a good few people on the ground in various locations across um, Australia so from, from our time there. So we just gathered some information from, from as many of them as we could to get a kind of a balanced feel for what's going on. Perfect. Um, and can you give us a bit of info on the current market there? What's it like? Yeah, like the Australian market, uh, you know, has been and kind of continues to be reasonably reasonably buoy buoyant, right? The one thing I would say is that just given the nature of people not being able to travel for so long and the fact that the borders only opened up really about 12, 12 months or so ago, um, you know, it's a premium destination for Irish accounting talent, right? So I would, I, people are seeing a little bit more competition for roles on the ground than they did perhaps 12 months ago um, when the borders are only opening up. Right. So so what I kind of would kind of say is that, you know, it's probably best these days to keep your options as open as possible when you land, land rather than being hyper specific in a particular type of company or role. OK, uh, and I guess, look, we're kind of heading into an interesting time, too, because um, it's approaching year end around June 2023. So for most Australian companies, it's their year end. And that's where roles come about and where they get stuck into new projects, etc. So so it's not a bad that's not a bad time of year to be hitting the market out there, I reckon. Perfect. Um, and in terms of the type of roles people work in Australia, I know you were you were a bus boy or waiting tables <laughs> at the Sydney Opera House, would that be correct? That, that's exactly what I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, okay. for newly qualified accountants <laughs> that may not want to do that, what would you, what do they need you go into? <laughs> what would you recommend? Yeah, like, so, so, so look, predominantly, they're going to be financial accountant and related roles. OK, uh, much like here on the ground, that's where the majority of people end up. You will get random roles around the financial analysis side, uh, finance business partnering side. They're harder to access and they're usually accessed from people who actually are in the com company itself. OK, um, so predominantly financial accounting and related, I guess, uh, um, or project accounting. And um, I guess in terms of industry as well, there's a really nice mix between financial services uh, the industry sectors, et cetera. So you won't have to go directly into the service industry like me, Brian, um, uh, hopefully when you're over there. Perfect. Um, and then same question again, permanent versus contracts. Is yeah. there anything to keep in mind about Australia? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So so look, typically, guys, you, you'll arrive over there in a 417 working holiday visa, um, which means you have a right to work, but not to work permanently. Hence, a lot of the roles will be uh, three to six month rolling contracts. Uh, which will typically be focused around like a busy year end or a particular project. So if you're fortunate enough to get sponsored, you then will flip to a 482. OK, um, and uh, but this doesn't usually happen uh, straight off the bat, but it does enable you to stay longer term with a comp with with a with a company. Um, and then look, a couple of other things on visas, what we've touched on it, Brian, um, there, there were some processing delays with holiday visas in the past year because of demand, but they seem to kind of be be resolved at this moment in time okay um the nice thing with it is that you'll have 12 months from being granted the visa to having to actually land on the ground there okay um and, and it's only activated when you land on the ground so i'd be encouraging people to earn the side of the caution if you think you're going to be going in the next six months why not apply for it now get things um get things kind of um set up for yourself and there is a small bit of a movable feast now so uh in terms of some of the rules around it so i, I probably would encourage people to kind of uh, access those immigration visa websites they're very straightforward they're very clean uh, and they'll tell you exactly what's happening day to day there that makes sense perfect um and then in terms of finding a job someone's got their visa they're good to go yeah. should they be start looking for a role now before they land over or just wait and see when you're on the ground yeah look if you asked me a question four or five years ago and i said there's no point starting to look until you actually land on the ground but much like siobhan says said and some of our other speakers will stay say the fact that people have gotten used to virtually interviewing and onboarding means that there is a there's an increase uh, hope that you could actually do that. OK, so some people want to arrive with the security of the role. Um, some other people are like to do a little bit of traveling first and settle into the job. OK, so so it all depends on your personal preference. And, and you know, remember proximity to where you work, say, in a Sydney, you know, you might want to work in a particular uh, area of Sydney and live in a particular area of Sydney. So sometimes it's better to get a feel for it on the ground before you land over. OK, um, so so look, regardless of which route you take, whether it's from here or when you land, you're probably looking like something between one to three weeks 
in terms of an actual search process if you if you if you go about it properly i guess okay um recruiters in the finance space are very prevalent in the major markets like sydney and melbourne and perth okay so so look with a recruiter where you have direct access to hiring managers that it could be as short as one to two weeks okay in terms of search process um if you land and you're applying directly to roles as you arrive uh, it can take a little bit longer okay because you don't have that direct hiring manager access and sometimes there's a higher chance of being lost between the cracks i guess if there's 250 people applying for a particular job i guess you know so so but look you should be sorted within three weeks unless you're being hyper specific about what you're looking for that would probably be my my my, my best top on that yeah, makes sense. And you mentioned figuring out where you might live. Realistically, 98% of people on this call will be living in Kuji or Bondi, so don't <laughs> need to worry about that. Um, <laughs> next question then, in terms of sponsorship, like what is the likelihood of people getting sponsored? Is it common? Is it hard to do? Yeah, I, I wouldn't set out thinking that you're going to get sponsored straight off the bat. Uh, can I mention it earlier? You, you tend to take on a contract role prove yourself within that business and then they actually take on the responsibility and the cost to actually sponsor you because you're a known entity okay and there's other complications that occur for companies when they need to sponsor like they'll have to advertise the role in the public domain uh for up to a month to prove to the government that there isn't local talent so you know it, it, it is trickier then, then it might seem on the surface, okay? Um, but still, there's plenty of examples of good Irish trained accountants getting sponsored over the years, right? But that's a year two thing, I reckon. And what happens if you get to the end of year one without sponsorship, mm -hmm. but you want to stay? Is there a backup yeah. plan? Sure, there sure is. So it involves typically uh, taking on a, what's the language around it, some type of agricultural or related activity for a three month period. So, so some people uh, pick oranges, OK, which, by the way, guys, if you're thinking picking oranges is straightforward, it's probably the most grueling job you'll ever do in your life. OK, I, I did have someone one time who spent three months uh, working with a carnival and going town to town with a carnival. And that qualified as agricultural work in some w weird way. So 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 there there's there's ways to go about it. Right. Depending on your preferences. But it's kind of like uh, giving back to the community piece before you can re-engage in your second 12 month commitment. Yeah. Fair, fair. So plan B isn't all that bad, I don't think. Not um, terrible. So perfectly, or perfect. Um, next then, average pay rate. Um, do you have a range there that, you know? Yeah, so so look, this there's a this thing we say in Barden all the time is it depends, okay? So there's always variables around salary, but if we were to give a kind of an average, you know, for someone who's a uh, big four or similar trained, kind of newly qualified out of a training contract, you're probably looking at somewhere between around the 95 to maybe 100-ish, you know, maybe up to even 110 for some roles in terms of Aussie dollars based salary, plus this lovely thing called superannuation, which is a fancy word for kind of a pension, okay? Um, but it all depends on the size of the companies and the nature of the role. Um, then if you're someone who's got that little bit of PQE, maybe a year of experience, okay, outside of your training contract, it kind of is a bit funny because if it's a, an additional year, maybe an audit, um, it mightn't be seen as compounding your experience or sorry, d diversifying your experience. If it's a year experience, maybe working uh, outside of practice or in another consulting role, diff that year can have different value depending. OK, um, but in general, salaries can vary from maybe, you know, up to maybe that kind of 105, 110, maybe up to 120 K base plus plus super. OK, so super superannuation is pension schemes, I said, OK, and um, all employees are re required to contribute to the fund and your employer then makes a contribution. So right now, the rate is set at circa about 10 percent. OK, so you got to factor that in your 120 K base or whatever is not 120 K base. It's minus super. Okay? OK, but you can reclaim that when after a period of time when you leave. I yeah. Think. But it does get taxed at 65% or something like that. Ah, so. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not uh, a deal. Perfect. Well, uh, just to wrap up Australia, then top three tips for anyone making the move. Yeah. So look, listen, depending on what route you want to take in terms of accessing jobs, the 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 the, the general would be first of all, there will be higher high enough competition for roles on the ground. So do try to differentiate your 
differentiate yourself from others uh, in terms of your CV, in terms of how you articulate yourself, etc. And look, the Barden template that we use here in Ireland is, is very good and applicable on the ground. OK, so do do seek that out if you can. Um, I guess the other thing is that you might be over there on a working holiday visa. Right. But there's the work is a word associated with it, too. So when you're going in to actually interview over there on the ground, make sure you prepare for it like any interview you would here in Ireland okay so it's just put the work in just being because you're a chartered accountant and you can chat away I guess doesn't mean that you're not you're going to be guaranteed to get the job okay uh, and you know what something that people trip up on a lot Brian is just the basics of accounting the stuff that you might have studied but not have used you know what's the difference how to account for an accrual or prepayment or explaining what they are don't underestimate how important nailing the basics are Right. Um, and look, the last thing I'd say, because I did it myself, you know, uh, obviously I, 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 I bust tables as opposed to working as an accountant over there, but be open to different options and different experiences. Um, that's hugely important because Australia can give you a lot, a lot. But the word holiday exists in your working holiday visa, too. So make the most of it while you're there. It can't be all about the toil, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Good advice there.